Konnichiwa. Welcome to Jackrabbit Journal and the Jackrabbit football team, Hank, on to the national quarterfinals for the first time in school history. And it wasn't a pretty win over Villanova on Saturday, but they got it done. They did, and that's all that matters. It was a big win for the school, for the program, for Coach Stig. Uh, uncharted waters for the program. Absolutely. And so, uh, hey, yeah, on to the next one. All right, Jacks beat Villanova 10-7 to on a Chase Vinatieri field goal with a minute and 20 seconds to play. It was the only points of the second half in the ball game. SDSU held to a season low 197 yards of total offense, but the Jackrabbit defense gives up its fewest points of the season. And props to defensive coordinator Clint Brown and his coaches and his guys. The Jacks had two weeks to get ready, and they were. Could have been a shutout. We should have had that before half, but it was just a lot of fun. We focused on Coach Dig, uh, focused on having fun today, and fun is winning, and fun is going out and doing and dominating, and that's what happened today on the defensive side of the ball for the most part. Bobby, talking about 11 hats to the ball, Hank. You've heard this before. If winning with defense is winning ugly, nothing wrong with winning ugly, right? Absolutely not. Uh, winning is, is winning, no matter what book uh, you may be in. And the Jackrabbits, they will find a way to get it done this past Saturday while not posting a whole lot of, of anything really on the scoreboard as far as the offense is concerned. Not a whole lot of yardage uh, or offense to speak of, but uh, they got the points when they needed them, and, of course, that resulted in the win. All right, the SDSU offense uh, didn't do a ton in this game, but they did enough to get the job done. It was a little frustrating. I mean, obviously, our job is to score points, and that's what we've done all year, and that's what we uh, want to do every game. But, uh, I mean, we played through it, put a drive together at the end when we needed to, and uh, going to come back, go back to work for another week, and play another week. So, eight teams left now. The Jackrabbits will play at... North Dakota State on Saturday in the quarterfinals. But this game, this Villanova game, against a really, really good defense was a good way to get ready for going up to Fargo. Well, it certainly was. They're going to take a look at, a, at another very good defense right. this week in the Bison. Uh, certainly some unique looks that were thrown at the SDSU offense uh, by Villanova yeah. and some very good football players at, at every level. Uh, they, they knew they had a challenge coming into this one. The weather, of course, was one that they hadn't necessarily factored in, but certainly played a part this past Saturday. All right, uh, some more thoughts and numbers on the North Dakota State game coming up a little bit later. Up next, though, first half with Coach Stiglmeyer. Why the Jacks were not able to maintain much of an offensive mojo after that first scoring drive and why take a timeout when the other team is about to kick a field goal why not jackrabbit journal on midco sports network is presented by sanford orthopedics and sports medicine dakota land honda service first federal credit union and jackrabbitcentral.com Well, welcome back. Well, we thought it would be a tough go for the Jackrabbit offense against a very good Villanova defense in this playoff game, but I did not foresee it turning out the way that it did, where the Jacks only scored 10 points in the entire ballgame. No, absolutely not. Uh, figured that eventually the guys would be able to get something going and uh, put uh, put the ball in the end zone a few more times. Um, but I think that's just us selling Villanova short, being unfamiliar with them a as we are. Uh, sure, they, we knew they had players coming in, uh, but we, I guess we just didn't realize that they were that strong across the board defensively. And hats off to them and their coaching staff for a solid game plan. All right, here is Coach Stig on the Jackrabbit offensive struggles and all that timeout stuff that was going on when Vill uh, Villanova finally scored at the end of the first half. All right, Coach, you're, you're a pioneer. You are, you're on to another never-been-done-before <laughs> in South Dakota State University football. On to the quarterfinals. Congrats. Well, uh, I happen to be blessed to be around a really good football team that has done this. And uh, thank you, and I'm proud of them. And there's more to be accomplished, but we're going to, like I told them in the, in the locker room, enjoy this moment. Yeah. You know, it was a tough game. Enjoy the moment. Then let's go to work. You're the, you're the captain of a pretty good crew right yeah. now, right? It, All right. It, I'm blessed. Let's get in here. Uh, Terry and Chris, you're going to see Jesse Bobby coming up here. What what was kind of the vibe that you wanted your guys to play with going into this game? What was well, the you know, I, t I tried to take the pressure off them. I, you know, I said, let's have fun today. They know winning is fun, but I didn't want them to feel the pressure of you lose, you're, you're done. Yeah. This is a great job. We knew they go on... Uh, they go for it on fourth down yeah. a bunch. They, they struggle a little bit with their field goal kicker. So a great job at the point of attack, uh, specific, specifically by Christian Benaziak. And Jesse Bobbitt in on the sack there. And then this is the scoring possession in the first half of the ball game. And he gets Dallas Goddard, another one-handed catch there, and then keep the tempo going. And uh, Christian to Jake Winicky on the next play. Yeah, that, our, our, our offense does a really nice job with the up-tempo about four times a game. Uh, normally we run it in that situation with run-pass option. 
uh, hits Jake on the slant. Uh, Taron, at times, the game moves so slow for him. This was one of those situations. And this is a great throw to Dallas uh, for the touchdown. Yeah, you know, when you when you look out there and you say uh, Dallas or Jake, and, and which is the smaller corner, more room there on that one. Uh, just a, not an easy throw, but a pretty good uh, chance to complete it. All right, Jacks go up 7 to nothing in the first quarter here, and then this is Villanova's next possession. Blake Witzel is back. A defensive tackle, and he gets in on the sack. Yeah. And, and we need him back. You know, we lost uh, lost uh, Shane Gottlob, and and first game back, he gets involved in that. We had good pressure in that situation. Good call by uh, Coach Brown. Second it, quarter here, another fourth down. Yeah, you know, it, it, that's a scary place to run. It guy's more daring than I am, but <laughs> great job by Jesse Bobbitt. Uh, again, part of it was we knew they were going to do those things, so we had practiced those things, those situations, those plays, yeah. probably more than we ever would. Now, this is unfortunate. We're down there, and we're not going to get any points here. Karen needs to step up in the pocket. There was no pressure inside. Uh, Jake, off to his left, you don't see it was wide open. He could have run for the first down, but that's football. You know, you make a decision, you live with it. And the snow really starting to come down at this point in the ball game. Villanova goes on a six and a half minute drive to end the first half here. Yeah, that uh, that was a tough play. Um, Micaiah Slade should have that guy. He went really low, caught us up on the play action, and 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 make the play. Credit to those guys in the end zone or the red zone here. Second and seven. At the goal line, second and goal, I should say, from the seven. Good defense. Don't let him out of the pocket, Kellen Solik. Don't let him do that. Keep him contained. Maybe we get a sack, make, th make things even tougher for him. They were out of timeouts because they had used some, uh, and so we had three timeouts. You know, Maybe we overcoached this thing, but uh, uh, we always freeze the kicker. I've never been asked so many times why I used the timeouts. <laughs> it's pretty standard procedure. It has yeah. been, right? And then is this a touchdown? It is a touchdown, right. but it shouldn't be because Nick Mears should have the slant. He should have intercepted that ball and should still be running uh, to the north side of our stadium. That's our technique. He backed up a step. Could have been there a step earlier, but that, again, is football. All right, 7-7 seven, seven, in a tie at halftime. You see the conditions there. What kind of condition? What kind of part did the conditions play, the weather conditions? You know, I think the biggest thing was the footing. You know, you saw Taron fall. As I watched the film, I didn't realize that, that during the game. As I watched the game, the, the film, you saw guys not having great both, – both sides of the – the, the the field the scoring drive you guys go on in that first quarter it was you know the up tempo you said you know you can't do that all the time we've talked about this for years why don't you just run that offense all the time you, you just can't do it can you well some people you know some people choose to do that they're no huddle they you know it's it's similar to that we choose to to huddle up uh, maybe have a little more uh, flavor in our in our offense, and then we have nine plays that are signaled in. If we go up tempo, we can run one of right. nine plays. All right, and I know you guys prep your minds out for these games. You always game plan, but does a game ever go the way that you think it's going to? There's always. 99% adjustment. No, yeah, yeah, well, the f case in point, uh, their first series, they run an option play they'd never run before out of a formation they never used like that before. It was always a, a bootleg type of play, and here they're running an option uh, to the other side. So our coaches adjust, kind of shut that play down. Did I think we were only going to get 190 yards on offense? <laughs> that didn't go Probably as we not, planned. Right? But, uh, you know, find a way to win the game. Second half coming up next. Dallas Goddard stealing a pass down the stretch. Turns out to be a good thing. And first-year kicker Chase Vinatieri knocks through a cold-blooded game winner in the final 90 seconds. And why the Jacks are not satisfied with the playoff participation medals they've been getting in the last few years. Welcome back. Jackson Villanova tied 7-7 at halftime. What were you expecting in the second half of this game? Well, I was expecting the guys to come out with, with some fire and, and look to, to take some shots downfield, get big number 86 and number 19 a little more involved earlier on uh, in the second half, but they just weren't able to do that. All right, uh, back to Stig uh, with the last three and a half minutes of the second half of this game. All right, Coach, tied 7-7 at the half. Did you think your offense was going to get some things going in the second half? I, I did. So. Yeah. I did. And, and uh, I mean, we had the one good series at the start of the game, uh, early in the game, and then we kind of, of, of made some errors that set us back. But again, unbelievable defense. I mean, they had the stats, the season to prove that it was going to be a tough game. And I know you love defense, but there, there was maybe too much of it in this game for, for a lot of people's liking. Well, one of the reasons we win the game is because of our defense. Yeah. You know, we, we rose up. Our special teams were really, really good in that weather, and our defense made some crucial stops. All right, there were nine straight punts to start the second half, and then we're going to go right to the fourth quarter here, and about three and a half minutes to go. What happens on this play on a catch made by Dallas Goddard? Well, um, just 
he's coming back because he's scrambling. He doesn't know he's throwing it to Marquise there. He's just doing his job. Probably Marquise is wrong and not working lateral. And uh, again, Dallas is not going to say, you catch it, I'm going to catch it. And just uh, He's a playmaker. All right, a big 33-yard play there. And then Goddard open and Taron misses him here. Unfortunate, but we didn't block it. And, and so Taron's got to throw it quicker than he wants to or throw it uh, at a different angle. And But you know what? This is cool to have uh, – uh, Chase come in and win the football game. He kicked it with confidence. Uh, a little scary there, but but uh, uh, we knew he was going to be able to make it, and I love what, uh, the way it worked out. Minute and 21 seconds left. Jack's up 10 to 7. Not over yet. Villanova starts it at a, its own 30-yard line here. Cole Langer with a sack. You know, that's happened so often in his career. He finds a little bit more at the end of a game, and yeah. that's hard to do as, as, a, as a defensive lineman. It makes the sack. Not only did he make the sack, he crushed the guy into the field. And here's their fourth down play. A little bit of holding on their left side there but uh, good coverage uh, good call by our by our coordinator and, and good feeling uh, for the Jackrabbits. And you talk about how good their defense was you guys shut them out in the second half. We did and, and uh, other than my timeouts maybe they only scored three or don't even score three <laughs> in the first half so uh, good feeling uh, in this again my favorite formation victory uh, take a knee and we always yell Jack Jack's win we didn't do it here but uh, you've been around a long you've been around a long time Andy Talley's been along a really long time, and this, this yeah. is a good guy that's going out in his last game. Unbelievable man. 32-year uh, career at Villanova, brought the program back, 12 years in the playoffs, uh, special guy. All right, um, did you guys struggle offensively in this game, or was their defense just that good? What both, was going on? both, yeah, well, both. We made some errors. We talked about a little bit off the right. off the air. Uh, you know, we slip here. You know, it, it, just here in football, in a series, one play quite often, a six inches makes a difference, and uh, we weren't making them the other day. All right. Chase Vinatieri, redshirt freshman, comes in there, makes that kick. Brady Hale, your punter, was really good with all the defense that you guys were playing and the, and the defense they were playing. Yeah, our special teams, I think, had a huge impact in this game. We are, we are six out of eight in terms of our goals. Uh, Brady Hale was phenomenal. I mean, we were backed up one time, and he kicks a 53-yarder, yeah. I think. Uh, Chase makes the makes the uh, field goal. Uh, really proud of those guys. And a lot of different ways to win a game, and this was just a different way to win a, win a playoff game. Right? Well, well, it is. And, and uh, do we lose faith in our in our offense? Offense. No, we learn from it, and, and we get to play another week, so we're excited. All right, what is this? This is a we talk about participation medals in our society these days. <laughs> That's what this is. If you get into the FCS playoffs, get to this point, your team gets one of these. You don't want one of these this year. You want something well, bigger than that. You know, uh, we are excited uh, to make the playoffs. Uh, that's the 2009 medal, the first time we made the, the, the playoffs. They're all the same. I have five of them in my office. Yeah. It's a reminder of falling short in the playoffs. Is it kind of cool to have? Yeah, but again, it's a reminder. We want to come home with a trophy. we got a ways to go before we can do that. Well, it has. It's been a great season. Conference championship, first time in the quarterfinals, but they don't want any more of those little medals. Anything short of really – Taking this thing all the way is going to be a disappointment, isn't it? Certainly. Uh, this, this team is, is, is too good to, to settle for a participation medal. Can't believe they even give those guys those <laughs> things. Uh, but, no, but they, they, these guys know where, what the goal is. They understand that. There's no, hey, let's not make this any bigger than what it is. It, this is what it is. This is playoffs. It's an opportunity to do something very special, uh, to win a national championship. So uh, you know, it, starts, it starts this week uh, with, with, the, with the boys up north where they've already been up there, familiar, familiar territory. Go get it done, guys. Guys. All right, the Jacks play at North Dakota State on Saturday. SDSU beat NDSU in Fargo during the regular season, but why it will be a whole different ball game this time around, coming up next. Welcome back. 11 o'clock on Saturday morning, South Dakota State at North Dakota State. It is on uh, ESPN, and the winner is on to the national semis in the FCS. And this is the second time around this season for the Jackrabbits and the Bison. Jacks won 19-17 the first time in Fargo. What from that game means anything to this game on Saturday? Well, I think a whole lot, actually. And the big thing being the fact that these guys went up there and did get a win. Something that the young guys around this program, the coaches, really everyone for the past six years hadn't been able to say that we can do that. Right. Well, they have done that. And when they took a look at that film the week after that game, they would have seen or should have seen plenty of opportunities for that win to be more convincing. Heck, they had a, they had a touchdown taken off the board in that game. Uh, so... They should be feeling very good about what they're about to do this pat this next Saturday in going up to Fargo, a place 
they're familiar with. Yeah. A bunch of guys they're familiar with. They don't like. They don't like us. We don't like them. Let's go out there, roll it out. We know what to expect. Go play football, make some plays, and have some fun. And the head game is plays a huge part, does it not? Of course it does. Yeah. No. It, 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 football is. It is. If it was, if we were rolling out a bunch of robots, then the head game it wouldn't. It wouldn't be a factor. Uh, but uh, these are human beings. These are young men, who, and they they understand what this is all about, and they understand what's on the line. So there'll be some nerves involved. But eventually, you got to realize, guys, just football. You've been playing your whole life. So go have some fun. All right, Taron Christian did not necessarily play very well against Villanova. The weather played some part, of course, but he struggled in this game. In the game in Fargo, though, he was fantastic. Threw for 300 yards, ran for 140, and it might be tough to match those numbers again, but Taron Christian, of all people, has got to be really good for South Dakota State. No, certainly. You, you know, you, you're getting out of the, the, the bad weather. Uh, you're going into uh, some unfriendly confines. Uh, don't get me wrong there, but uh, there's not going to be any wind. Uh, the, it's going to be perfect uh, as far as uh, precipitation. <laughs> and uh, you guys got, you're going to go up there, and Taron's going to use his God-given ability uh, to do what he does best, which is run around there and, and chuck it up to, to his playmakers and, um, and make plays. All right, here's a little recap of that first game. North Dakota State led 17-3, to if you'll remember. The Jacks got a third-quarter touchdown, Christian to Goddard, to make it 17-10 at the end of three quarters. The Jacks got a field goal early in the fourth to make it 17-13. Later on, uh, out in the fourth, they force a three and out, get the ball back with two minutes and 28 seconds to play. They got to go 80 yards, and they do. Christian goes to Goddard down to the two-yard line with five seconds left. And then on fourth down, Christian to Jake Winicky for the winner with one second left. And Winicky had six catches in that game. Goddard had 11. They got theirs in that game. And as you mentioned, they're going to have to get theirs again. The superstars are going to have to be superstars for the Jacks. Yeah, they, they really are. And I think that another big thing that we really haven't hit on is you know, with, with these games against NDSU, so much is determined in the trenches with the big yeah, guys. Yeah. Uh, they, they've got difference makers on both sides of the ball, and they're playing really good football right now. Uh, Kleiman's got them rolling on, on firing on all cylinders. Uh, so I really think you, you want to see some excellent matchups. Uh, they're not just on the perimeter, guys. They're down low with the big boys going head-to-head -head on every single play. All right, whatever we saw in that first game, the blocking, as you said, the play calls, the defensive alignments, we might see a little bit of it in this game again, but probably not a lot. Stig says the Jacks and the Bison know each other way too well. The game plan is going to be different for both sides. I can't say we're used to going up there in the playoffs, but we've been up there a number of times. Uh, we had success this year up there, and so I think we go, we're going to go up there with some confidence. And you can change, things will change from the last game when you won up there. Without yeah. a doubt, without a doubt. If we run the same plays, uh, shame on us. And if they run the same defense and the same plays, shame on them. That's part of the chess game of football. What is the next progression? Well, the next progression in this uh, showdown, as Stig says, what could we see from either team in this game on Saturday that we haven't seen already this year or in the past when they faced each other in the playoffs? It's going to be something different that's going to make a difference in this ball game. No, they certainly are. There, there will be wrinkles. Um, I wish I knew exactly what they that they were going to be. Your guess is as good as mine. Uh, but when I'm looking at this from, from NDSU's perspective, if there's one weak link or what they could foresee as a weak link for this SDSU defense, it's the unproven corners. Granted, they've been there all year uh, and, and they've played very well all year. Uh, but what I could potentially see the Bison doing is breaking out a little more play action earlier in this game mm -hmm. to try and get over the top against SDSU, uh, catch them off catch them off guard and uh, and try to get up early because you get the Bison get up early and that defense is really hard Although to Although they to come did in the first time around and the Jacks came that back. They so. did. So from SDSU standpoint, I have no idea what Coach Isaac <laughs> is going to come up with from the offensive uh, perspective to, to try and get an edge or something that the Bison haven't seen. But make no mistake of it, folks, there will be wrinkles because there absolutely has to be in order for somebody to, to take a step out and say, hey, this is our game. All right, uh, the SDSU season ended in the playoffs in Fargo in 2012. The Bison won that one 28-3. It wasn't even close. Same thing in 2014. Bison won 27-24 on a Carson Wentz touchdown pass with 54 seconds left. So that is the playoff history, and uh, it's going to be fun to watch on Saturday. All right, one last thing this week. Christian Roseboom, the Jackrabbit Richard freshman linebacker, second in the voting this week for the FCS Freshman of the Year, the Jerry Rice Award. He missed it by one vote as being the, the award winner for this. But what a season 
for Christian Roseburg. Hey, remarkable season, breakout season for the redshirt freshman. I remember it was the spring game. We were talking yeah. to linebackers coach Jimmy Rogers. He said, I think I found my middle linebacker. Yeah. Uh, we got a lot to work on, but he, he's got a ton of talent. And uh, needless to say, he has broken out, and we are going to have a fantastic time watching him over the next three years. All right, we will finish up with wrestling and basketball coming up next. How about those Jackrabbit men? Starting to get some excitement building now after that slow start to the season. Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, Dakota Land Honda, Service First Federal Credit Union, and jackrabbitcentral.com. Welcome back. Hank McCall is from the state of Iowa. Did you ever wrestle in high school? I did. Were you any good? Sure. Did you ever have thoughts of maybe dreaming about the Iowa wrestling program, as, as great as they are? No, no, I didn't. My high school, we didn't have wrestling. It was just in grade school. We were able to do it through the public school. All right. All right. And so, yeah, I didn't. All right. The most famous college wrestling program in the country came to Brookings for the first time ever last Friday. And Frost Arena was packed for this duel against Iowa, a record crowd of 4,087 fans. But they never really had a chance to get into it. First four matches of the duel were all very close, but Iowa wins all of them. The Jacks do get wins at 197 from Nate Rodert, a 9-5 decision for him. And then at 133, Seth Gross wins by Tech Fall. Gross is 7-0 on the season, but Iowa wins the duel 29-8. The Jackrabbit men's basketball team set to play at Northern Iowa on Wednesday night. The Jacks beat Kansas City on Saturday, and the home win streak for SDSU's men is now 32 in a row. That is second longest in the nation. Andre Wallace off the bench uh, with 21 points to lead the Jackrabbits in that win over Kansas City. And the SDSU women improved to 6-1 with a win over Arkansas Pine Bluff. Uh, Maddie Giebert, eight threes, that is one short of a school record. Carrie Young goes over 1,000 points in her college career, and the Jacks are at home this Friday night against Green Bay, and we will see you next week on Jack Rider Jr.